Welcome to So Very Easy. My name is Laura, and I have an idea, and I have not tested my idea out yet. But I thought maybe you'd like to come along and see how my idea is going to go along. Now, this idea is going to involve using old jeans, and we're going to make a denim blanket. We're not quilting this because denim is heavy enough, but we're going to add some fabric to it and cut things very simple and do the stitching very simple. Let's see if it's going to work out. For this project, I'm going to need some old jeans. I might need a little bit of glue, and I do just like to use this child's school glue. It's washable, and I prefer this over a glue stick because when it dries, there's no goop involved. And I do have a charm pack that I think will go great with denim. And I'm going to use a Primo Soft thread. Now, this is a polyester thread, and I'm going to use a selection of golds. I'm also going to use a twin needle. But if you don't have a double needle, you can always use a single needle. So I need to cut these jeans up. When I cut up jeans, I cut the center of the legs apart. And that way, it opens up to a nice, big, flat piece. So I have this big leg that I'm going to be working on. I will be using two pairs of men's jeans. So from this, now that this is flat, I'm going to be able to cut squares. I'm going to be using five inch squares because the five inch squares will match the five inch charm packs. So I'm just gonna cut five inch strips and then cut those strips into squares. So I ended up with 53, five inch squares. So I have all this beautiful denim, a pair of pants that could not be used, and it was quite new denim. So I'm gonna have some old and new denim, and I really think that is going to go well with that fabric. This little charm pack is Silverstone, and it's from Robert Kaufman, but you can use scrap fabric too. Normally when we stitch things together, we put right sides together, we stitch our seam, and then we press them open. For this, I'm going to do a raw edge. So I'm going to overlap. And I'll use the dark fabric so you can really see what I want to do. I want to take those squares and just overlap them. And then with that twin needle, stitch down the center. So if you don't have a twin needle, you can use a stitch that's going to give you a zigzag or perhaps some of those decorative stitches on your machine. So I think there's two different measurements that we can start off with. We can start off with a half an inch and overlap using that half inch or maybe even a quarter inch. I'm gonna try that quarter inch first. If you wanna try this, definitely test some scraps first and see how it works out. So I'm just going to overlap. Because this is a very small seam, it's going to be a little difficult to get pins in here. And that's where I thought this glue might be helpful. I don't think I'm gonna need a lot of it, but just a couple of dots just to hold that to replace the pins. Place it down and press it with an iron to dry that glue. Then I'm gonna to go to the machine with that double needle and stitch down the center. Here's a sample of overlapping at a quarter inch. So I have a very, very little amount hanging over on one side and very, very little on that back side. Because I really want this to fray, I think I like that half inch better. With that quarter inch, it's just not catching up enough fabric for me. So over time, I might lose some of this thread. Now, if you're doing a decorative stitch, or a zigzag stitch, you can judge what size you want to overlap. Because I am using the denim double needle, I will be using that half inch. I just like the way it looks better. So here's my thought. I want to take all of this denim and sew it together just by overlapping and doing a stitch down the center. Some of the squares I'm going to cover with the fabric some squares I'll do upside down, and that way it's going to give it a reversible look. So I'm gonna take some of these squares right now 
and glue on the back a couple of these squares. I could glue on either side, but to start, I'm going to glue on the back. They're five inch squares, so they're going to match up. Just a couple of dots of glue all the way around, and maybe a couple in the center, because I just want to hold this down. Now I can press that, and that glue is going to dry, so I will have a reversible piece. So I'm going to glue some of these squares on top of some of these squares, and I'm just going to do it randomly. I'm going to put these blocks together. I'm going to overlap with some of the fabric on the top, overlap with some on the bottom. I'm not really going to concentrate on what is overlapping, what's going to be on the top. I just want to maintain that half inch seam allowance. So I will be drawing that half inch along the edges. And I'm using this wax chalk that when the heat hits it, it disappears. So I'm going to start and do a whole pile and put twos together. From there, I think I'm going to make blocks of four. We could do rows, but I think I'm going to start with blocks of four. So I'm going to just sew all of these together randomly with blocks of four. So once again, I'm just going to overlap that half inch, stitch down the center. This would be a fun time to use those decorative stitches on your machine or just a zigzag. And you could use up a bunch of different colored threads. So I've discovered a few things along the way. When gluing these two pieces together, and this is the piece that has the denim on the back, I did need to let that seam cool down so that the glue would stick. If I picked it up while it was warm, it just fell apart. But once it's cooled down, it has stayed fine. And I've been able to stitch this with absolutely no problem. I did find gluing this was definitely better than pinning. Because not all of the fabric has been cut on the straight of grain, it did have a tendency to want to stretch. So gluing it is definitely the way to go. But I only needed a little bit to hold it in as I was able to stitch that through the machine. And that stitching really did turn out quite nice. I have the two rows with that double needle. And on the back, it looks like a zigzag. And I'm not worried if I have a little bit of that hanging over. It's all going to fray up in the wash. So I did some with all of the fabric and then some with just two denims together. From there, I did sew them together in units of four. Same thing, I did put a little glue, ironed it, let it cool down, and then it was easy to pick up and transfer. I had no problem going over this intersection. I just slowed down a little bit as I came to this point. So on the front, I have these two rows of stitching. On the back, I have a zigzag. So after doing two of these squares for the front, when I turned them over to the back, I felt that I was not going to enjoy the back very plain like this. So I will be adding the fabric squares along the back as well as the front. So I'm going to mix some for the front and some for the back. I did start off with 52 of these denim squares. So I will glue all of these charm squares on the back of fabrics. And that way I will have some on the front and some on the back. And I will also make sure that I have some of the good side of the denim also onto the back side. So that way it's going to have a nice appearance. I decided the four patches worked better than doing a long row. Because denim does have that little stretch in it, I'm going to be able to press this and square them up so that all of the squares are going to be the same size. So then I'm going to be able to draw that half inch seam allowance, overlap and stitch them together. So I'll be taking all of my blocks and turning them into these four patches, having them random in the front and the back. The only thing I am going to maintain is I'm going to have that two rows of stitching on the one side and the zigzag all on the back side. And when all those four patches are done, I'm going to square them off so they're all the same. Those blocks do end up being nine and a half inches, give or take a little bit of that denim stretching. I do have a nine and a half inch ruler so I can just trim off any of the outsides. I found that most of the blocks did not need trimming, 
I did follow that half inch seam allowance and I matched up those edges. So there was only the odd little area that was stretched out here at the seam. So I'm going to continue and put these blocks together and let's see what I've come up with. Now that the quilt is all done, I did use a total of 48 5 inch denim squares and some random pieces of fabric. I did not end up using that whole charm pack because I had already started before I thought I was going to use more. The quilt does equal 27 and a half by 36 inches and all of those seams have just overlapped. The front is a lot of fun and the back is just as much fun. Now if I was to do this again I would definitely add more fabric onto the back just to give that back a little bit more dimension. But when it's washed, we're going to have all of these seams fray up and it's still going to have a very nice finish. For the binding, I'm going to do a technique which I call my raw edge binding. And I'll put a link in the description for you. But what it does consist of is a piece of one inch denim folded in half and stitched all the way around. The edges are not finished, so both sides end up being raw. So let me put the binding on this, give it a wash, and I'll be right back. When it comes out of the wash the first time, we are definitely going to have a lot of these longer threads. So I will give them a bit of a haircut. It'll take a couple of times before the threads all settle down. So the front does have that nice frayed look. Even that raw edge binding will need a little bit of a trim and I will put a link in the description to do this. I did it for the I Spy quilt. It's the same technique except I'm just using denim instead of cotton. And when we turn it over we have all of that beautiful frayed look. And it really does look nice when we get that little pop of color along the back. So I have a bit of a haircut to do for the back and a bit of a haircut for the front. So the reversible denim blanket took two pairs of men's jeans and a couple of little pieces of fabric. By overlapping those fabrics, there was no seams. We just drew the seam allowance, glued them on, and stitched them on the machine. This is a great time to use a double needle, a walking foot, and some decorative stitches on your machine doesn't have to be a straight stitch. You can do each one of these with a really fun decorative stitch. Now I did not know how this was going to turn out and that's the fun of it. I had an idea and I knew that that idea would build as I was going along. The other fun part about that is I'm not hard on myself. I just let it go and figure out how I'm going to do it as I go along. And sometimes it turns out a lot better than what I imagined. If you like using up jeans, this is definitely a fun project to use up those jeans with. And I think it's going to be a great little throw so I can put it outside and sit and read a book. And the more I wash it, the softer it's going to become, just like that old pair of jeans. I do hope you enjoyed today's episode of So Very Easy. Feel free to subscribe. And as always, come on back. Let's see what we're sewing next time in the sewing room. Bye for now.